people who is going to miss this sound getting around Newcastle this year. Perhaps you're on the other side, rejoicing that you don't have to listen to those engines rumbling past your house. With the event set to return in 2022 as the opening event for the Supercars Championships, one local researcher is taking a look at the event on a deeper level, the Newcastle 500. It's part of her PhD. Kate Booth is exploring the experiences of different stakeholders involved in the event. She's here to tell you a little bit more about it. Kate, good morning. Good morning, Kaya. Thank you for having me. This can be quite a divisive uh, topic of conversation around Newcastle. Are you ready? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I hope that I do all sides that I've spoken to some justice. <laughs> What's the inspiration for this being? Um, well, that's a really good question. So my research background is in um, gender, sexuality and sport. So I was looking at what's happened since women and gender diverse people have been allowed to participate in what's traditionally been male sports. Um, and in particular, the AFL competition in Newcastle. And what was really interesting about that for me was the way that women and gender diverse people react to these spaces and what limitations and affordances there are according to that. So from that, I became really interested in the power of sporting spaces uh, or the environments where the events take place. So when I first heard about the supercars that come into Newcastle, I didn't think too much of it probably. Um, I thought, oh yeah, great, I might even go to that. You know, I grew up in a family who always watched Bathurst. Um, <laughs> not a mad fan, but I enjoyed it enough. Um, but then I started to see these conflicts emerge as a result of the event. And I think most people, um, as, you were, as you were just saying, even people outside of Newcastle residents or even outside of supercar fans became really aware of these conflicts around the race. Um, and it really posed the question of what events do or do not look belong within a space and who gets to decide that and what we should be considering when we're deciding. And most importantly for me, the way that we're shaped by the spaces around us, because, you know, we have such a strong connection to these spaces, um, especially here in Newcastle as Novocastrians. I think we identify really strongly with elements of Newcastle, right? So whether it's like the Paul Harrigan Knights era, BHP, incredible arts and cafes um, at, around Derby Street, um, the space around us and what happens within it makes up part of our identity. And I thought that, you know, when I started seeing this event being spoken about, I thought, wow, this event's really a great opportunity to, you know, explore that a little bit more. And because, yeah, that idea of space, everyone who has an opinion on this, no matter where it is, comes at it from, is this the right thing to have here, in this space, in my space, in our space, really? Mm, absolutely, absolutely. How different can those perceptions be? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think we're we're constantly performing uh, according to our surroundings, right? So when we look at the east end of Newcastle, there are beautiful beaches, beautiful parks, people out and about. Um, that's the space and the environment. That's the physical nature of it and what's happening there. Um, but how we perceive the space is usually due to our own experiences, and perceptions and, and ideas of what should go there. So some see the area as relaxed, peaceful as a peninsula and community. Others can look at the exact same space and they see a city and a perfect um, space for events to take place. So for some, um, you know, the, the area is really family friendly, it's relaxed, it's a nice atmosphere and the supercars coming into that event completely changes it for them and it becomes the polar opposite when the event is on. Whereas, you know, you speak to other people, events like supercars is what makes the space family friendly and a three day weekend that they can spend time with, um, with friends and family, sorry. Um, so it's the same space, but it's like different perceptions determined on, you know, how it's perceived. Yeah. What are you trying to learn from people through this? Oh dear. Well, <laughs> excellent question. I don't know yeah, myself. It, it, Thank it, you so much it, for asking. No, no. So that's the real beauty of research though, isn't it? It evolves as, as you're going along coupled with what's coming out of your data. Um, I think at first I was really um, aware that this is such an important topic for so many people, whether they're for it, um, whether they're against it. Um, you know, for some residents, they're like pretty, um, severely disrupted for two months of the year with, you know, fences and construction. For others that come in for the race, the atmosphere of having it on the beach and the street track is what makes it such an incredible experience for them. Um, and that's only a really basic example of a really complex issue. So I really wanted to come in and capture these complexities and hear directly about people's experiences um, with the race so that I'm able to sort of 
collate and present people's perceptions and thoughts on the event. I mean, we've seen a lot of it on social media um, and the and the news and newspapers and things. But I'm hoping to dive deeper and hear about the positive, negative, and neutral impact that it has on people's lives, and really be able to share those experiences from all sides. And because humans are complex uh, folk, uh, even if we dislike something, sometimes we also have benefit from it as well and then we confuse ourselves as to what we actually want so there are many layers to our opinions and feelings about an event like this yeah absolutely and i think especially when you're looking at so many and that's what i mean when i'm saying that this is such a complex issue i wouldn't even be able to tell you in a day the amount of different stories that i've had that have just added multi layers of complexities to an already what appears quite a complicated issue are you starting your interviews now? What do you need from us? What do you need from the community? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm about halfway through my data collection, but there is no such thing as too much for me at the moment. <laughs> because as I keep saying, that all this, every time I speak to somebody, they're coming out with you know, new stories and new ideas and new opinions, and it's really, really interesting. So I'm pretty much looking for anybody over the age of 18 to be involved in an interview. They usually go for about an hour. Um, so I like to be able to, if we can do it over Zoom if necessary, go for a walk, just sit down, have a chat face to face. Um, so I'm really looking for people who live in or near the track itself, um, as well as supercar fans or people who have attended one or more of the races or intend to go um, to one in the future. On top of that, um, I'm after any business owners or stakeholders who might just be interested in having a talk and sharing their thoughts and experiences. How can I get in contact with you? Um, I think the best way is probably via my email address, kate.booth at uon.edu.au. Or if that was too quick, you could probably Google Kate Booth, University of Newcastle, <laughs> and my profile will pop up there. <laughs> or give us a call here and we'll get you in touch. Uh, Kate, thanks so much. I look forward to seeing where it all ends up when you're, you're finished. Yeah, I can't wait to share it. Thank you so much for having me. Kate Booth there, PhD student, research assistant at the University of Newcastle, wants your opinions around the Newcastle 500 event, the impact that that has had on you, on the space around you. If you want to get in touch with her, give me a call, one 1233 Carl can pass on those details.